you for joining me today for this month's Keystone Student Assembly. My name is Natalie Bond and I'm a student success advisor here. Today we are going to be talking about setting up your school year. So this is a little bit generalized, so it's relevant to students in all grade levels. Uh, but if you have any questions as we go through today's session, feel free to type them in the chat box. And as always, feel free to interact with the questions that I ask of you. So I learned what grades you each are in. Now let me know in the chat box if you are a new student to Keystone or if you're a returning student. You've already finished some classes and you're ready to get started with the new school year. So let me know, are you a new student at Keystone or a returning student to Keystone? Great, all new students, well, welcome. We're glad you could join us today and uh, at Keystone in general. So at this point, you should know that Keystone provides a self-paced and independent learning environment for you as a student, but what exactly does that mean? That means that the only due date that you are provided at Keystone is your one year due date from your date of enrollment. So if you enrolled, to, enrolled today on August 9th, 2023, you would have until one year from now, until August 9th of 2024, to complete your courses. You can complete your assignments however suits you throughout that 12 month timeline. You have access to your Keystone courses 24 seven, so you can work to complete them whenever works best for you and your schedule. If you're an early riser, you can finish your courses first thing in the day. Maybe you prefer to wait until your support person is home from work to complete your assignments. That's okay too. Maybe you want to work shorter hours each day, but work more days a week than the typical school year. You can do that as well. You can work any time that works for you and your student, but you really need to do the work. You are able to work through your courses, not only at what time that works for you, but also in what manner works for you. So you can complete one course at a time or all of them at the same time. It's up to you. We'll talk about this a bit more uh, in a little bit. Keystone provides you the freedom to live while learning, but also puts a lot of responsibility on you as a student uh, and for Brenda on you as the learning coach. It is important that you have a support person and an accountability partner to help you work through the self-paced independent online learning environment, helping you to reach your goals. An accountability partner is an adult, like a parent, guardian, aunt or uncle, maybe your older cousin or sibling, or a tutor who is there to work with you through your schooling and help, as it says in the name, hold you accountable to your goals. Basically, they're there to make sure you're doing what you need to do and when you need to do it and help you if you are struggling. So you want to make sure to help you deal with that freedom and responsibility that you have an accountability partner that's there to help you and support you as well. So the first thing we'll talk about is setting up your school space, right? You need to have somewhere to do your schoolwork. Setting up your school space before you begin your courses is very important. Your school space needs to work for you and your individual needs, but overall it should have these qualities. It needs to be a place where you can focus. Some people focus better in complete silence and some need noise and movement around them. You wanna pick a space that works for you. I know for me, I cannot work in complete silence. I need some music going or someone talking to me. I can't work in complete silence. I, I can't focus that way. So you need to know how you focus best and what kind of space works for you. A super quiet space or a space with a little bit of noise. You need somewhere that you're able to store your school supplies. Whether this is a desk, a bookshelf, or a bag that you move around with you, it doesn't matter. But you need to be able to find your school supplies when you need them. So maybe you have a bookshelf or you have a specific desk you work at, or you just have a backpack or a bag that you keep all your school supplies in and you can take on the move with you if you need to. Where you're working needs to be a well-lit location. Being able to see your work is a very good thing. So having some natural light or some good lighting in that room is really important. It's going to help you focus and help you not strain your eyes when you're looking at your computer and your schoolwork. And last uh, main 
part of what your school space quality needs to be is it should not be in your bed. You may need to have to do your school work in your bedroom based on your living situation, but you should never complete school work in bed. You wanna keep your sleep and your school separate. So again, you might need to work in your bedroom uh, depending on where you live and how your house is set up and what space you have, but you do not want to ever sleep uh, well, you will end up sleeping, but you do not want to ever do your schoolwork while sitting or laying in bed. Okay, so help explain me, uh, explain to me why you think each of these school spaces received either a smiley face, a meh face, or a frowny face. So let's talk about this one up here in the top left corner. Why do you think that this one received a smiley face? Let me know in the chat box. If you prefer not to type in the chat box, you can turn your mic on. I just give you permission to do that. It's a proper space to do schoolwork. Good, Jamie. Uh, what makes it a proper space to do schoolwork? What are some... Good, Brenda. It's quiet, it's well lit, and she has headphones to help her focus. So she might be using those headphones to play some music to give her some noise, or she might be using them to block out the noise of the house around her. Good. Um, okay, let's think of another one. Let's pick another one. Um, why did this one receive a frowny face? And they're in bed. Yes, in bed. And as you can see, he is not focused on his schoolwork. Um, he His eyes are open a little bit, but he's mostly sleeping, right? So he's not learning the material he's going through. He's not going to remember anything he's reading or watching right now. Uh, so bed, not a good choice. Now, uh, what about down here? This girl in the bottom right, uh, she's sitting in the on the floor in her bedroom. What do you think of that one? It has a meh face. Why do you think it could be an okay place to do schoolwork? And why do you think it could be not such a good place? Yeah, Jamie. So there could be distractions nearby, right? So this one kind of depends on the student, right? Some students uh, are more kinesthetic learners and whatnot. And so moving around and sitting in different areas is good for them. I would not recommend this as a space that you go to every day for the reasons Brenda said, poor posture, poor writing surface, right? But if you just need to switch it up a little bit and you need to move around just to change your environment for a second, that's okay. Uh, and you can do that right, uh, you know, in your house. Um, okay, so speaking of changing environment, what do you think of this one? This guy is at a coffee shop doing his schoolwork. So I gave it a smiley face. Yeah, this is a quiet coffee shop, at least from what we can see, Jamie. So it is an excellent spot to do schoolwork. And you, they probably have good internet to use. Um, so that is good. Um, some people really like to switch up their, their school space. And sometimes they'll work at, work at home. And sometimes they go to the coffee shop. Or like this kid is doing, they go to the library, right? And so you can focus, you can switch things up a little bit, but you can still get your, your work done. Uh, he doesn't have headphones in, in this picture uh, at the coffee shop. But if you're at somewhere like that, a coffee shop or, you know, a park or something doing your work, uh, and it's a little noisy for you, just use those headphones, you know, to block out that noise or play a little music for yourself uh, to help you focus as well. But if you're getting stuck uh, in your schoolwork and your motivation at home, switching it up and going to a coffee shop or the library, or I like to go work in our local park sometimes, uh, as we work from home at Keystone. So uh, that's a, a tool I use as well. So don't feel like you need to be stuck at a desk 
in your house all the time doing your schoolwork, right? You want to have a school space that works for you, but it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly the same every day. And it doesn't have to be exactly what works for everyone else, right? You need to find what works for you. Does anyone have any questions before we move on, on a school space, um, what they plan on using for their school space, or any questions on any of the example school spaces on the screen? Thanks, Jamie. Okay, well, if you are typing a question, I will happy, happily answer it in a minute. Uh, but if not, we'll go ahead and keep moving on. So now that you have your school space in mind, you have that in your head, what you're going to do. Uh, that is great. What are you going to do each day with that school space? That's where your daily routine comes into place. You get to decide what your day looks like, but you need to have a routine. Some students have routines that can stay the same throughout the majority of the year, but others that have schedules that change often. It just depends on your lifestyle. Whichever you need to follow is fine, but you need to set daily expectations for yourself to help hold yourself accountable and to give your brain and your body an idea of what it needs to do each day. When it comes to your schooling, there are three main types of daily routine schedules that work best. First is every course every day. This means that if you are in math, science, social studies, English language arts, and an elective, you work on all five of them every day, five days a week. Or whatever course breakdown you are enrolled in, you do each and every one of them each day. This is good if you are a student who gets bored focusing on one thing for long periods of time because it provides you a lot of variety throughout your day. It's an organized and familiar schedule, as this is how most brick and mortar schools are set up. But it can be too much changing and hard to focus depending on how many courses you have to get through each day. Some students find it hard to switch between five different subjects within their, their school day timeline that they have at Keystone. So uh, this doesn't always work for them. But if you get bored focusing on one subject for a long period of time, this might be a good schedule for you. Another option is block scheduling. This is when you complete certain courses on certain days, rotating between the courses. So you may do math, science, and, and an elective, Mondays and Wednesdays, and English language arts, and social studies, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Block scheduling allows variety throughout your day, but doesn't overwhelm you with the number of courses being worked on each day. This might be difficult and confusing for some students to only work on courses two to three days a week and have a longer period of time between working on a subject. In addition, for some students, this is still too much change and variety throughout the day to be able to focus fully. Some people like to include Fridays into their block schedule as a scheduled day with Monday and Wednesday. So you do your two subjects Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and the others Tuesday, Thursday. But my favorite way to do block scheduling is to use Friday as a catch-up day for anything that you didn't have time to finish Monday through Thursday. So Friday is kind of a little variable. Maybe you didn't get through everything uh, on, in science on Monday and Wednesday, so Friday you're going to work on science. The nice thing with this one is if you have everything complete for the week by Friday, then you can either work ahead in your schedule or you get an extra day off and you get a long weekend. It's a great motivator for yourself throughout the week to help you stay focused and productive if you know that if you get all your work done Monday through Thursday, you can have a long weekend. The third type of schedule is one course per day of the week. So this would be if you did math on Monday, science on Tuesday, language arts on Wednesday, social studies on Thursday, and an elective on Friday. Students who like to focus on one thing at a time really like this as they are completing all their work for the week for that subject in one day. But for many, this can be very boring to focus on one subject for a whole school day and overwhelming to think about completing a large portion of a course in one chunk of time. 
So take a minute and think about which daily routine schedule do you think you would pick? And let me know in the chat box. Block scheduling, good. I'm a little biased. Block scheduling is my favorite kind of schedule, but again, that's what works for me. It's different for everyone. Jamie, every course, every day, that's a good one too. That's what we're familiar with. And if you have trouble focusing for a long period of time, that's a great way to switch it up um, and get everything done. Block scheduling, great pick, Luna. Great, Troy. So if you're not really sure which one you would like best, I would recommend trying one for a week and then trying the other one the next week and see which you liked better and then sticking with that. And as always, you're welcome to switch up your routine at any time. We'll talk about this in a little bit. But if you start with block scheduling or you start with every course every day or one course per day, and then you know in a couple months you're getting bored with doing that, it's okay to switch it up. You know, you can switch it up depending on what works best for you that time of year. So you can change it around and see what works best for you. Uh, you know, you might do better with one in the winter time when it's gross and yucky outside and you have to focus inside all day. You know, maybe doing every course every day would be better for you then. But in the summer, when you have more time to move around and things outside, maybe one course per day works better for you. It's okay to change it. Sure, Sharon. Yes, switch it up. Whatever you think might work best. Once you decide what your daily routine course schedule best suits you, it's time to make your daily schedule. Again, this may be different for you every month, week, or even every day. And that's okay, but you want to write out your schedule. It is best to post it in your school space as well as in a public space, like on the fridge, uh, maybe in the dining room table, anywhere in your home so your accountability partner can help to keep track on you, keep track of you as well. Remember, in your daily schedule, you want to take a break at least for 10 minutes every hour. Some students do better with a five to 10 minute break every 30 to 45 minutes. It depends on you and your needs, but you need to take breaks from school throughout the day and get up and be active during those breaks to help reset your brain and stretch your muscles. So you want to sit down and come up with, you know, an hourly schedule of what you're going to do each day. Again, if your schedule stays the same throughout the day, uh, throughout the year, then you can write a schedule out like this and keep it the same, right? But if it changes, then you can change it up. Troy, this is just an example of a student who's working, you know, a full year. They're working an hour a day on a, each class. So they are doing five hours of schoolwork a day. This break, obviously, I mean, this schedule includes their breaks. It includes uh, lunchtime um, and they're getting ready in the morning. Uh, but you can decide what works best for you and your student. Does anyone have any questions on the daily routine or um, anything else we've gone over so far? Sounds great. Okay, we'll keep on going. Now that you have a daily routine planned out, it's time to figure out what you're going to be doing during those scheduled work times each day. Sure, Sharon, I'll go over that in just a little bit. We'll hold on to that question. So you wanna figure out what you're going to be working on during those scheduled work times each day. This will help to provide you goals during your day and help you to know if you're on track to complete by your goal end date or one year due date provided by Keystone. There are different ways that you can create a schedule at Keystone. First is the assessment pacer. Uh, middle school and high school students have this in their student application, and you can use it to create a weekly schedule based on your goal, start, and end dates that work best for you. 
you put in your start and your end date and it will give you a weekly schedule to follow and then check off your assignments as you complete them. This is also available for your support persons in their support application. So your accountability partner can keep track of how you're doing and use that to check in on you. Middle school and high school students can also use the pacing guide in their courses to give you a daily schedule of work, work and assignments you need to complete. For our elementary students, you can use the scheduling tool that's built right into the OLS for a daily schedule for you to follow. Or you can create your own schedule. Remember, Keystone allows you to work how works best for you. So use the assessment pacer, the pacing guide, or whatever you would like to help you create a schedule that is suitable for your needs. The Keystone Student Success Advisors are here to help you at any time. So you can reach out to us if you need any assistance creating a plan for course completion. Or Sharon, if you are realizing that your student is not able to stay on track with the schedule that you have created and they're falling behind, it's a great time to reach out to the student success advisors so we can help you uh, go over, you know, what might not be working, some tips on things to try, uh, and help create a schedule for you. If you are unable to complete by your one-year due date, that's okay. We do have extension options, but obviously we don't want you to have to take that long to complete your courses. We want you to be able to finish within the 12-month timeline uh, so that you can keep moving on with your education. Thanks, Troy. Keystone has a lot of resources for you to use while you are a student here. Let's check them out. So if they're not able to complete the hourly schedule or they're not able to complete their stuff during the, they're not able to complete the amount of work that's in their schedule during that hourly schedule. Sure. So if you are finding that your student is taking a little longer to get through the, the work um, and isn't able to complete, you know, what's on their course schedule within that hourly schedule that you set up, I would recommend scheduling a one on one with a student success advisor. And we can kind of talk through what might be taking them a little longer or if we need to maybe reevaluate those goals that you set and see if, you know, maybe uh, they do need to be taking the amount of time they are taking to successfully, you know, learn and complete the courses, or maybe they're just struggling with note taking um, and going through how to how to do that. So I would recommend scheduling a one on one so we can go over, you know, what's happening exactly with your student and what might be the best way to go about it. On average, the Keystone courses are designed to take 180 uh, instructional hours to complete. So if you were trying to complete uh, in the time frame of a typical school year where you would need to work one hour a day, five days a week or five hours a week to be able to complete that course in that time frame. That's an estimate. You know, um, some students work quicker, some students work slower. Uh, you know, it really depends on the student and the subject and whatnot and how they, they are in that course. But we can go over that with you uh, more one on one and how it would work for your student. Brenda, yes. Uh, for elementary, the elective courses, which would be history, art, and science for them, uh, have uh, less of a workload than the math and language arts do, just based on what the focus is at that grade level. Trey, do you have any questions? Or just learning along. Okay. So next we'll go ahead and talk about the resources that are available to you all. First is our Strong Start program. All Keystone students, both new and returning in all grade levels, kindergarten through 12th grade, are automatically enrolled in our Keystone Strong Start program with our student success advisors. Well, welcome back, Troy. 
During your enrollment, you will receive tips, tricks, and check-ins from the Student Success Advisors as part of our Strong Start program. This information is to help you best transition to the independent learning environment at Keystone, provide you with online learning resources, and make sure you are on track to complete by your one-year due date. During Strong Start, your support persons and accountability partners will also receive information to help them help you. This information is sent to the email we have on file for you. So make sure you have provided the correct information. You can always update your contact information by contacting our student support representatives. Let me know, have you gotten any Strong Start emails from the Student Success Advisors yet? Well, I will say if you got an email invitation for this student assembly, then you did receive one. Uh, and you may have um, received with some getting started information as well when you first enrolled in your courses. If you haven't gotten yet and you just started new classes, uh, they will be coming your way. If you want to double check that you're getting them, reach out to the student support representatives. We'll go over their contact information in a little bit and make sure that we have the correct email address on file for you at Keystone. The Live Well Learning Collective hosts all of our resources for parents, support persons, accountability partners, students, and more. You can find our podcast. Uh, called Keystone Unplugged. You can learn about Keystone's clubs, read our blog, our blog articles, and see our school-wide announcements, and check out our Keystone School Events calendar to get involved. This is emailed every Monday to everyone with the updates that are added to the Live Well Learning Collective, but I also put the link in the chat box for you. I would recommend bookmarking that now uh, so you always have access to it to help you uh, in your courses and to get involved with the extracurriculars at Keystone. Keystone Unplugged is our very own Keystone podcast. We have episodes on just about every topic you can think of when it comes to online learning and education, both from school leaders and from students. You can check it out on the Live Well Learning Collective and be sure to subscribe and listen bi-weekly to the new episodes that premiere. And just because you're learning online doesn't mean that there aren't things to get involved in. Check out the Keystone School events calendar on the Live Well Learning Collective to stay up to date on all things Keystone and sign up to attend events that sound interesting to you. We have club meetings, social hours for all grade levels, department open office hours, and fun school-wide events. We host a variety of events every month, so don't miss out. And then Keystone is very active on social media, and we would love for you to connect with us. You can join us on TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, the Live Well Learning Collective website, Facebook, and in our private Facebook groups that are only available to Keystone students and families. We post online learning tips and tricks, fun trivia information, announcements, chances to enter to win gift cards, and more. So feel free to follow us on all the social platforms and get involved uh, with Keystone. Have you followed Keystone yet on social media? But right, I, if you have social media, I recommend you do after asking your parents uh, or guardians if you are able to. But uh, I definitely recommend uh, joining us on at least the social platforms that you are able to. There you go. We have a lot of helpful videos on YouTube and we add more every week. Yeah. There are a lot of people here at Keystone to help you. You just need to reach out and ask. The Keystone Student Success Advisors are here to help with getting started, organization, motivation, navigation, communication, and any general questions you might have. You can email the Student Success Advisors anytime. You can schedule a one-on-one -on -one to chat in a guaranteed 30-minute time slot through the calendar in your student application. Or you can join our open office hours, which are called Q&A and the Q &A with the SSAs every Tuesday between 12 and 2 p.m. Eastern time. 
and you can sign up to attend those through the events calendar on the Live While Learning Collective. Keystone has certified teachers that are here to help you with your course content and assignment related questions whenever you might need. Their contact information is located within each of your courses. For middle school and high school core subjects, so math, uh, language arts, social studies, and science, you can reach out to the Keystone teacher link and they are available Monday through Friday during regular business hours via phone, email, or online chat room like we're in today with a maximum 90 minute response time. For middle school and high school electives, advanced placement courses, world languages, and the more advanced or very specific courses, you will reach out to your course teacher. Their contact information, again, is located in your course, and they will respond within 24 hours, either via email or phone. And for our elementary families, you can reach out to your grade level support teacher via email, phone, or chat, and they will respond within 24 hours with assistance for you. And again, their contact information is in your class as well. The Keystone School Counselors are here to help you via email, through scheduled one-on-one -on -one 30 minute meeting times, or during their open office hours on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And again, you can sign up to attend those open office hours in the Keystone School events calendar on the Live While Learning Collective page. Our school counselors are here to help with transfer credit questions, whether you're transferring to Keystone or from Keystone, course selection, college and career planning, goal setting, mental health assistance, and dual enrollment assistance for our high school students. Last but certainly not least, our student support team is here to help you. The student support representatives are available via phone and email Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. They assist with enrollments, course transfers, account information, payments, and any other general questions that you might have. Our technical assistance representatives are available 24 seven to help with trouble with course content, student application needs, and any technical troubleshooting related to your online learning at Keystone. Make sure when you reach out to them, you have your computer on and ready when you're reaching out for assistance so that they are able to help you appropriately. Okay, let me know in the chat box. Are you ready to get started now? Awesome, Luna.